We're out on the open road. We took a different route today, just my brother and I. We're rolling out to West Magnolia. We're gonna be doing the counterclockwise version of the route that Greg Shot took us on. The infamous Greg Shot ride. So hold on, it should be very, very interesting. We're on a back road called Dobbins Huffsmith. We're still in town, but look, it feels like a country road. We the, sun took, is the sun is up, man. Look at that bad boy. So, uh, stay tuned. Look at that dog. He's racing us. All right, you win. <laughs> On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton. We went out west. Well, you see Oklahoma to the right there. We took uh, Dobbins Huffsmith Road to an area called Ventura. This actually dumped us right near Mount Magnolia right there, which got us closer to West Magnolia. You can see we go by Magnolia there, and we head out Riley Road. We took the, we, we did a little excursion in that little loop you saw there, but then we went up 1774 past Todd Mission. We were doing the course counterclockwise. So we took County Road 302, Head and counting clock against the direction we'd taken in the past and went basically FM 2 to County Road 323. And there we wanted to do an excursion and then we got back into Magnolia. The route was very interesting. It seemed to be faster to us. By the time we got back into town, it, I couldn't believe that we had been out that long. But we got out there so quickly by going through Dobbins Huffsman as opposed to the Woodlands. It was just my brother and I, but I think you would love the clips that we got for you. All right, you legends. We're out of town. You know We're what that means? We're on the open road. Yeah. Let's ride. County Road 302. Yeah, in Grimes County, Texas. We're doing the course we did before, Magnolia West. Enjoying Counterclockwise. This beautiful road. Yeah. A very lovely day. Minimal traffic at this point. And we just seem to have more ups going in this counterclockwise direction on 302 than the other way. See, it says like 2 to 3% here. The idea was to just ride this time of the year. You're tapering off from whatever your season was like, and you just want to kind of maintain some semblance of your fitness. So we started at about probably 6.30, I think. So it took about two and a half hours to this point in the rise of nine o'clock in the morning. That jersey looks more blue by the interpretation of the camera, but it's more like a teal, like a greenish blue to the eyes. The camera's interpretation gives it a more of a blue tint than the gray, the green that's in it. So the objective of this ride was to stay in zone two primarily. So by training the way we do, our zone two is high. That's a nice house there. Oh, a nice piece of property. Got a little private lake. Wind's picking up. I got a little lower. When it's just Paul and I, we don't drive very tightly. We're just kind of rolling, and then from time to time, we'll ride side by side. You know, taking in the sights. Just being on the bike. Keeping a conversational pace. I mean, it's not an easy ride, but it's not zone four either. You 
in a few kilometers, I'm going to have Paul come to the front and I'll take the camera. That guy slowed down the other side because there's a car behind us. And I don't know why he slowed down and moved over. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have done that because you encouraged him to pass you when it's on safe. He should have just used his lane and let that guy wait. He's coming around now. Drivers do that a lot. They'll see a car coming the opposite way and a cyclist. Then they'll move over in their lane so that car can squeeze by. That's just not, not the best decision to make. You use your road and let that car wait until it's safe. Then they can use the lane you're in. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Everybody's in too much of a hurry every day. Going nowhere. The road kicked up, so I stood up. I didn't realize it was 7%, but I felt it. Yep. I thought for at least four. Yeah, you can see it register four. You're gonna feel it. You ride the hills enough, you can gauge, you get to know what a three or four percent climb feels like. So you want to get a good workout, you got to go out of town. Or find a, a road nearby that's quiet with good stretches of no intersections. So a lot of people in the major metropolis might use a park. Like if you're in New York, in Manhattan area, in the city, you would probably use Central Park. So you can find places. But uh, for us, we like to head out on the roads less traveled. You can see that this road is going up. It says 2%, 3%. You want to find the rhythm. You want to tap it out. You want to work, but don't labor. Look at that, clear. County Road 302. Goes down a little bit and I'm coming back up. I go ahead and stand to avoid shifting. You should be able to handle varying cadences without a deterioration of your form. We're still climbing, my brother. <laughs> yeah, look at the road in the distance. So uh, in this direction, we seem to have more 1.5 kilometer climbs, like one mile climbs than coming the other way that we did before. So I definitely was thrilled that we tried the counterclockwise. And you can do the same thing on your route. You have a route that you like doing a lot. Try it from a different direction every now and then. It gives you a different perspective. You see, my cadence is low right now. It's almost like 70, and I'm, but you need to still be smooth. Muscle memory. There's no reason for your form to deteriorate with your cadence goes down. Yeah, that car <laughs> passed and then hit the brakes after he passed and sat there for a bit. That's what Paul's the hose meaning that. You passed and then slow down. So why did you pass? <laughs> Obviously, you ain't going anywhere in some, any kind of hurry. Maybe he hadn't seen... Uh, serious cyclists before because we're working here this is good work you should be able to talk and you're not necessarily completely out of breath but you need to feel like you're working so when I, when I do the work, I like to go from zone two to regular zone four. I don't like to hang around zone three. There aren't too many situations where you would need to be training to adapt to zone three. Because either you, you're building the oxidative capabilities of your capillaries, 
or you're tearing them down by increasing your lactate threshold. So it's better off for you to train very low intensity and then go hard when your schedule calls for it instead of messing around in the middle areas. That's average. There's no point training there. Go through it and get to zone four or more. The road is still going up. We've been climbing for a while. Feels like that's how some of the mountain climbs are. You drop, you drop something. It wasn't anything important. I had, uh, I had taken a gel earlier, okay. and I told him it's trash. The wind caught it. it I put like it, it between. I put it in the pocket between the phone and my jersey, and somehow the wind got oh, in there. Okay. I don't know how I did Copy that. that. Paul just saw it flick out of my pocket as I crested the hill. The wind hit it. We have yeah. a lot of wind out here. Yeah, I put the shots behind the phone. Okay. And the wind caught it. Okay, cool. This is 302. We're going to turn left. You know this we continues. Yeah. Yep. Man, I don't forget much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was telling Paul when we took that corner, I said, You know where we are. And so he says, Once I'm on the road, I don't forget much. That's the thing about being on a bike. You feel closer to the road. I go someplace one time by bicycle, it's etched in my memory. If I'm in an automobile, unless I'm driving, yeah. I don't remember as much what a beauty man i'm just enjoying this sight yes yeah, beautiful this is just nice this is this is this is where you need to go work out you, there are oh, roads like these everywhere shoe, you just got to seek them out is that a rafa sock no these are rafa shoes ah leave it to them with those colors Nothing like a beautiful tree line road, road with some uh, rollers. I guess I'm going the way the trees. Yeah, the trees are uh, tree line the roads. Yep. We have a lot of uh, pine trees, live yep. oak trees in this area, so native trees. And thankfully, the people out here have not cleared the trees away because in our metro houston area they, they want to put the houses five feet away from each other so they come and clear everything and then put these twigs that will take 50 years to mature The reason the area is called the woodlands that we go through is because they restrict yep. how much clearing you can do on the land. So as a result, they're heavily wooded even with all their growth. They've done a good job of making sure people don't just hack all the trees and place a house five feet away from the next one. Doing a course the opposite way gives you a better appreciation. So all your downhills become your, your climbs. <laughs> and we're no feeling traffic, it. It no just seemed, signs, it seemed no more lights. challenging. 
why would you not want to be out here? Yeah, no intersections for miles. I mean, I think we rode like 20 kilometers before we came to an intersection on 302. The road less traveled. These little bumps, man, they kick in. And a little bit of rooster will crow. And there. That's a rooster crowing. <laughs> I'm mocking the rooster. The cock crows at dawn. <laughs> He's a couple of hours beyond sunrise, but he got it in. Everybody's got donkeys and goats and sheep, different animals out here, cows, of course. In farm country here. Yep. It was nice and cool this morning, about probably 19 or 20 Celsius, 69, 70 degrees. But it felt cooler, like the duck. air is dry. <laughs> yeah, we heard a duck quacking as we went by. It got all kinds of animals out here on these, on these mm. farms. Yeah, this beats dealing with traffic all the time. So it's like, you know, during the week, we're, we're pressed for time. So we have to ride close to home. But on the weekends, I, I want to get out of town. I don't want to do the same courses where you've been zipped by cars the entire time. These busy roads. This is nice. This is, this is it. Look at this road. So you got to look in your ear what you have. Plan your routes accordingly and go out and enjoy the fresh air. It clears your mind. You can work out your issues while you're on your bike. You know, run through your thoughts and sort things out. It's just nice. It's what it's all about. Therapeutic time. Get those endorphins to help you sort them. Yeah. Gonna enjoy these bumps today. I'm wearing my old Asos Uno, Uno, Uno short from many, many years ago. I think it's at least a decade <laughs> old, if not more. And it still functions fine, you know. You take care of your stuff, they last. Yeah. I remember this fence with the holes in it to let the wind go through. Of course, I got my Suki jacket. Paul's wearing Suki kit as well. The road's going up. I can feel it. I slip downhill. Yeah. Enjoy this part, man. <laughs> Paul's talking about Rizio Topo Topi. Paul loves these kind of routes. Yeah. Just you and the bike. I see him. Whenever Mo is riding, he picks the quietest routes. Even in the busy areas, he's, he finds yeah. roads that have fewer cars as a choice to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. If you want to enjoy it, you got to respect it. It's kicking up here again. the wind so when you ride for many many hours with enough intensity to activate your slow twitch oxidative capacity 
that builds lasting speed because what happens then is as you go harder when you need to, your body can process lactate more efficiently. You need those slow twitch fibers to process the lactate that's produced by the fast twitch fibers. You gotta build those capillaries so you have more pathways to be able to generate lasting speed. You also use these rides to work on your form and your fit and your function. That's what I mean when I say we train, we don't just ride. Paying attention to everything. Lovely pavement, nice weather, tree line road, minimal traffic. What more can you ask for? It is Saturday. I'm looking for the smoothest path. So on these kind of roads where there's no stripe, even when there's a stripe, avoid the urge to be near the middle, especially when cars are coming. Stay to the right, just in case. Give yourself more room for any kind of mishap. See how my jersey fits? That's the way Suki makes this stuff. They have different styles. All vendors have like a casual fit or they call it a club fit and they got a race yeah. fit or whatever. I just prefer the race fit jersey. They just fit better. You put them on, you forget you're wearing them. There. So when your bike fits you, you should be able to ride like you see us doing. You shouldn't be pedaling, pedaling and stopping. You should be able to ride for hours comfortably. That's how you build fitness. This is a big descent here. It's a little choppy so I got on the drops. Trying to avoid the ruts where possible. When you're going fast and you hit imperfections, they rattle you. So when that happens, just put your weight on the pedals. Let the bike bounce on you. I remember this from the other direction. It's like a switch back from the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> I got caught on the break. It's out. I got caught on the front break. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cyclist going the other way. All right. Say our good morning. See how I'm not pedaling and it says zero RPM, zero watts. In order for that to happen, I must be in the picture. I must synchronize the frame on each clip to the data from the head unit. In this case, I'm using the Wahoo Fitness app. But if I, if I can't find myself in a frame, then I can't synchronize and then it throws everything off. It throws off the time, the, the duration, all of that. So it's very critical. We're talking about Where Riddick. The Chronicles Why of Riddick. People? These are the things I need to know. <laughs> Virion. Riddick energy. Kill the Riddick. Furion power. The Chronicles of Riddick. Nothing. 
Rocket somebody said, Furion power! <laughs> Furion energy! Look at this, man! That's the Chronicles yeah. of Riddick. Those of you who follow that, a series. I love that series. Vin Diesel. That's what I'm talking Pitch about. Black, the Chronicles of Riddick. And they have Riddick. Those legs Third break. installation, there is a cartoon in between Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick. That kind of fills yeah. the gap there. It's an excellent series. It's one of those Stay movies where they develop a following after they came out, long after the box office stuff, it just became a classic on its own. So who are his people? Where does he come from? Who are his people? These are the things I need to know. <laughs> oh yeah, that was nice. That was a long climb. It was longer than I nice. judged. I misjudged it. it. Stood for a while. And there's another one, and this would dump us on, uh, I believe, I think it's 362. Yeah, and that will take us to FM2. And it kicks up again. So you can't help but get a good workout. You don't have to kill yourself, but the goal here is zone two. So you just keep a steady tempo. The muscles still work. They work. They take the load. And you try not to get near a threshold because the goal of your ride is, you know, endurance, fitness, maintenance. But the legs are still doing a certain level of work. I mean, 340 watts is 340 watts. Doesn't matter what zone you're in. And the morning was cool enough to where you, you started draining your initial passages will drain this is what we get in the winter so the weather here has really turned from the summer heat we have it's nice this is 362 we'll get a few cars passing before we can turn and we end up passing our turn because once we get to county road 323 that was 302 we just left we're taking 323 going uh, westbound and once we get there these cars are coming by you know there's not a high volume but they're moving at good speed so the, the joy of having a mirror is that i could see the car as it came over the horizon in my rear view mirror because it just appeared and that's nice you don't have to turn to look so we end up going straight past the intersection doing a u-turn on a hill you'll see it in a little bit and the hill is very steep. It's at least 7 or 8%. <laughs> so when I turn, I just continue to shift and softly pedal to get the, the chain to move. Because I was stuck in the wrong gears. I was descending after passing the hill. This kicks up. So I love coming out here because of the terrain and the minimal traffic you have to contend with. We're going to be turning on FM2. There's a car behind us. That's why I see him. I look behind for his benefit. They can't tell you have a mirror. I Got wanted that driver to know. Yeah, we know you're there. He's going to come back. So you got to communicate with the other road users. Don't act like you're in a world of your own in a bubble. You're not. Coexist. This is FM2. Yeah. Which will take us to County Road 323. Who needs taco? <laughs> Who needs taco, man? We're we'll talking about Taco riding. Corner. Everybody heads to so Taco Corner every weekend. We've been doing it for years. It's time to mix it up. Yeah, yeah man. That's how much fun. That's a how, how much I didn't realize fun we it was have after nine. It didn't seem like we had been riding that long. But we left about, let's say, 6.30. So we've been riding about three hours already, let's say. What is it? it says 2.04 because we started a camera after, well, after an hour into yeah. the ride. That's why the duration is about off by an hour on the, on the, on the clips. This is FM2. And it doesn't really link too many communities. So you get a car now and then now and then but they're moving when they come by some kind of a chip seal, ride, but a, 
a better quality chip seal. Those, uh, that white line road. has those little ribs on them, so they're not smooth to ride on. And the shoulder is pretty minimal. And with the low volume here, we just go ahead and use the rim. So, I mean, I, I'm going to put it this way. So we're, we're riding, let's say, zone two. And we're doing 20 to 22 miles an hour, let's say. So if you train enough and build a solid base, your zone two is someone else's zone four or five, depending on their fitness no or their asked. genetics or whatever. Moving. That's what it's about. That's they what the training is about. Yeah, that's, you talk about that driver. Yeah. He knows we're moving. Look at that. We're doing 41K here. You know, it's a flat road pretty much. But if you're training between 23 to 25 miles per hour with some wind on a rolling course, and that's your zone two, when it's time to compete, you'll be riding 30 miles an hour, and it, that, that's like your TT pace. That's what it's about. That's what gets me on the bike. On days when you don't really want to go, because if you stop training, then your levels change over a period of time. You lose all that fitness you built. So it's a lot easier to just maintain your fitness rather than starting all over all the time. And when it's time, you just kind of fine-tune stuff. I think it's after we go over that hill in the distance, that will be our turn. So you can see there's like yeah. three to five minutes between cars, let's say, I'm estimating. That's County Road 320 there. That takes us to Whitehall. That we just pass on the right. So you're averaging, if you're averaging 18 to 20 miles per hour on a, a rolling course as your zone two, that's pretty good. You know, if you're using speed, uh, speed is not our metric for training, but just it gives you a perspective. So when you're really pushing them, you will be close to 30 miles an hour. Yeah, ordinarily I want to be on that black spot where you see the, the tar looks darker. But there's a lot of little ridges in there. You see the little white looking white line, the line you see? That line, you don't want to be on it. There, there, there are little dimples in the pavement. I don't know, some heavy machinery. We pass our turn because there's a guard. There's a car coming. I spot him in my mirror. He's cresting the hill behind us. And so I'm waiting for him. So we pass our turn because I couldn't turn. We wouldn't have been safe. So now we can turn. It just appeared out of nowhere because that's a hill from this direction, yeah. and this is a steep pitch we're on. I saw Let's the see what it says. Quick. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm downshifting because I was in the wrong gear. It's saying one percent as I'm further up. It's more than that. It's like five to seven percent. Yeah, now it's going up. Yeah. So we're we're on this seven eight percent climb. We would turn. Our, our turn is right there where I am. And I told I would tell Paul. I said you need to downshift. <laughs> and he says not easy. So six percent or something like that. So yeah, I gotta get up. Uh. <laughs> He's in a big gear. Well, going downhill right here. Then we had to turn around. We didn't have time to shift. That's Got what it. he's dealing with. Yeah, and you don't want to put too much load on the drivetrain while you're shifting. That's why he was like waiting till the grade lesson. You got to kind of lighten didn't the matter. load. That was a stiff hill. <laughs> yeah, I know. I downshifted because I was in the wrong gear when yeah. I turned. So I kept shifting and pedaling slowly. So what I would do is I would shift yeah, and pedal like slowly hard. and let it just yeah, kind of roll sense. in yeah. instead of torquing it, it even though I was on the climb. So whenever that happens to you, shift yeah. and then just turn your, your pedal lightly and help the chain get in. Then you can apply pressure. Don't apply pressure when the chain has been derailed. 
That's why it's called a derailleur. It derails the chain and puts it on another rail, or another car. Yeah. So this is County Road 323, which will take us kind of like a south easterly direction, I believe. It says south southwest. Yeah, it's between mostly south. It's spinning around. This road is twisty. We had the car on our tail and a car in the front. <laughs> yeah, we had a car behind, cresting the hill, and a car in front. I spotted the one behind because of the mirror, so I didn't have to turn my head. And so I was like, okay, I can't turn anyway. Because just as we were about to turn, he crested the hill, and he was coming too fast. And even if I didn't have the mirror, you would, you, you, you could hear it. We're not late for anything. I don't mind stopping and doing what we do. Right before that turn, yeah. we waited for there. Yeah. It's going to be a nice time. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other day when we waited for Darren we coming the up opposite way, that's a long drag. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> So if you have a place near your home that has a few rollers or whatever is close 15, 20 minutes from where you live, you can ride to it. That's a good warm up, do your workout and go back during the week. During the week, that's what I do. I have something close by. So within 45 to 90 minutes, I've got a good loop that I can do and go on back with the rest of the day. Because during the week, I don't have the hours to come way out here. The wind's hitting us. And I told him to look at the wind. You, if you look at the flags to the right in the distance, I didn't put an arrow on it, but you can see it. It's on the right, the U.S. flag. The wind is blowing stiffly from the left. We we'll have a lot of variable winds today. And in a few kilometers when we're headed back on Riley Road, the wind really picked up, so we started doing a rotating pace line. Getting that little break and shelter from the wind can help you keep the speed up. Look at the canopy of the trees. It's just beautiful. These kind of rides, you want to make sure you're fueling at least every 30 minutes of food or gel every 10 minutes or so. Take a swig of your water bottle. All right. See you. Got plenty of room. And the road's gonna start kicking up. I can just tell you can see it. That says one percent. It just starts to go up. So you find the appropriate ratio. You want to keep your rhythm. Speed doesn't matter. It's effort. It's a conditioning ride, so you just want to keep. You want to maintain that. Yeah. Yeah, I picked up a leaf. <laughs> it's in, under the brake. <laughs> yeah. It's under the brake. It sounded like a flat. I looked down, I saw this leaf just sitting there. We went through some leaves. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Look. Yeah. It Paul picked them up too. It's like all over the front brake. Yep. Yeah, I don't do crazy stuff. Like there was a there was a, a professional rider in the UCI put his hand in the spokes to do something. That just something got his hand in the spokes and hurt himself. Countryside. I don't remember the name of the rider, but I was like, you should have just stopped. Ended up getting his hand caught in the spokes. Another thing people do is like you ride, you ride through glass and they'll take their gloved hand and put it on the rear tire per se. I don't mind doing it on the front to just brush off glass, but I'm not going to do it on the rear because if your hand gets caught between the rear tire and your uh -huh. seat tube, 
you can yeah. do some damage. So no, yeah. when that wheel's moving, yeah. I'm trying to be cool. I'm gonna stop and spin the thing and brush it off. Yeah, handmade for that. The front tire is easier because you got a clear spot in front of you. You can just rest your hand on top of it and brush off glass, especially when it's wet. But I'm not gonna do it on the rear tire. Between the rear tire and the seat tube, you get your hand caught in or get damaged. Yeah, too much of a risk. So avoid taking chances like that. <laughs> the professionals yeah, okay. are yeah. under a lot of pressure, and so they push the envelope on, on yeah, a lot of things. Serious. You know, that's why they wow. crash more that's because that's they're they're on the edge like, so remember I told all the you? time. <laughs> We're not under any pressure. We're out here riding and doing our best. I was like, man, I gotta get my brother one. That was a. Good, you like it, man. We're going up. This is what I was talking about as we approach the corner. I think that's where yeah. we picked up there in the distance. This is a climb all the way. Bicycle saddles, you know, because uh -huh. it's a yeah. good material. That the outdoors are not damaged. Yeah. You get caught in rain, nothing. What's up, dog? That dog barked at us. I figured he's telling us hello. I was like, what's up, dog? <laughs> He kept quiet. There it goes. Look at that. It's kicking up again. Yep. Man. Yeah, this is the stretch where we, we ended up at the top of the hill waiting for Darren when we came through. You know, the jersey that we have that would look good with that is the one we got from Suki. The, the uh, first the one with the, the line. The, the tiger. Oh, yeah. The oh. tiger on it. Yeah, we definitely need to do that. Oh. Yeah, Paul, Paul talked like about a, a pair of shoes that. that we got. We'll on uh, this it's week and put the stone colored. Yeah. We'll bring it out in a future them. video. Yeah. But uh, it really he's talking about us blending it with one of the Suki kits. Because the color yeah. really matches. How you call it? Square to square. So that's what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Mike, uh, Mike Barrera, always he calls himself square to wave. What you guys working on? Yeah, these dogs in here. They're on the right. Come on, let's see what you got. <laughs> they're trying to race us, but the yard's not very long, so they can't really go. <laughs> they can't get up to speed, and the fence gets in there. <laughs> the horse gets chilling. <laughs> yeah, the horses are just calm. Like, like what's all that? Making all that noise. Yeah, disturbing the horse. This the is horses where are we calm. waited. Yeah, we waited here. Yeah, this is where we waited for. Darren, we're going the opposite direction. This is nice. This is like a climb the whole way. <laughs> This is where instead of us going left now, Paul decides we need to go do an excursion. So we did that off camera because we didn't even know what we're going to encounter. Let's go check out down here and we'll come back. So instead okay. of going left, go see. we go straight this way. Okay. It ends up uh, taking us. All right, you legends. We're headed back in town, headed east. We're back on Riley Road towards civilization. We made some excursions off camera. It took us to FM 2979, which is a new road we've never experienced before. It just, we, we're passed by like two cars in 20 minutes or something like that. Of just, course, it's later in the morning, so everybody's up. Yeah, everybody's about. in a hurry. Everybody's going to the store, Walmart, Target, CVS, whatever it is that they do. So we decide, we're going into the wind here, and uh, we, had, we decided let's just go ahead and do an echelon so we can keep the speeds up without having to tap into the upper zones. So with the rotating pace line, I mean, not an echelon, we're going to rotate every 15 to 45 seconds, no more than a minute. That's, that was the plan. Anyway. But what we do when we're riding, we just kind of go by feel. We don't really track the time we're spending up front. You can hear the wind, it is blowing. We're going into it. Blowing from the east. And the road is kicking up here. Yeah. <laughs> he said back to civilization. <laughs> huh? He said back to civilization. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back to civilization, go all of a sudden we got all these cars passing us and whereas when we're out in the boom docks, we'd get a car every five to seven minutes. Not not the case on this section of Riley Road this this time of the morning. 
10.33. It seemed later than it was. It felt like it was, it was an hour later. When we got closer to Magnolia, I asked Paul for the time. He's like, 10.50. I was like, man, we made, we made good time. We've been riding for about four hours. The duration's an hour less, as I mentioned earlier, because we started the camera an hour into the ride. The duration starts with the first time you turn on the camera. In a little bit, Paul will come and take a lead. This is a 3% climb. We're, just, we're right, I mean, seeing the, the, on Riley Road, I don't think they have a flat stretch. It's up and down. He's huge. <laughs> Big bone call. I felt like working my legs, so I lower my cadence a bit, increase the gearing. We're going into the stiff headwind. Head cross. It's coming from the east mostly and then from the right, south. So we're headed east. They keep saying north. Yeah, we're not headed north. Might be a little northeast, but this road is windy. It says north right here. It's more, it's probably northeastern. It's moving. <laughs> the direction of the, uh, the directional thing is swinging. That's, that's how this road is. It's windy. You look on the map, it winds around. Look on our rotation, my brother. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to rotate. We've been doing that on and off throughout the ride whenever the wind picked up. takes the lead, I go ahead and just slip in behind him. He's sitting more upright to give me a better draft. Gives me a bit of a break. I go ahead and pull through the switch to the camera. You see we're only using half of the lane. Once I get by, I go to the right because the wind is coming from the right and in our face. Then he can sit a little to my left and we can use half of his length. But by sitting on his wheel, you notice when I came through, I came through with some snap. That's the benefit of sitting in the draft. It's a reprieve, so you're not working the whole time. Now he's going to come through. The wind is really stiff, so he's coming through. We're taking shorter poles. As he goes by, I drift to the left so I can benefit from the draft. We're not doing it very tightly, you know, because we're just, this is a steadier pace. But when it's faster, you got to come over within less than a foot of that wheel when it comes by. Otherwise, you can lose the wheel. I'm doing something that let him go like that. I'm messing with the camera or something I'm doing. I'm going to ride back up to him. 
I uh, probably messed with my shoe. My, my, the tongue of the shoe felt uncomfortable. Okay. Go ahead and roll to the front. I move over. Give it a grab. So the idea when you're doing a rotating pace on whatever one person or a bunch of people, as you come by, you should be going slightly faster than the person on the right or the persons on the right. So that they should be a little slower than you. As you go by, you slip into their pace, meaning you slow down a little bit as you come over. You don't want to keep accelerating and then everybody ends up going full gas eventually. You don't want to do that. So as he goes through, he's the fast lane. I'm the slow lane. I drift behind him. But he keeps it somewhat steady. He just wanted to be going a little faster than I was. That means that as you pull over to the right, you got to back off just slightly. And the person coming around you, or persons coming around you, they accelerate a little faster than you are going to get in front of you. That's all that is for. They shouldn't be going full gas or jumping or attacking all that kind of stuff and leaving gaps. I go just fast enough to clear his front wheel. I got my eye on his wheel as I move over. That gives him the draft right here. Now he's in the draft. You can even hear the wind is a little quieter. So what are you doing with one partner or multiple people? Everybody coming over to the right just wants to go fast enough to give that person the rear wheel. Then once they get in that slow lane, they back off to that lane's speed. And the lane on the left, now we'll go in front of the person that just gave that wheel. So that it's just a revolving movement. And we're going from left to right because the wind is blowing from the right and in our face. If the wind was blowing from the left, we'll be going from right to left. So you want to move into the wind. That's where you're giving the shelter. So the shelter is, is coming from the right. That's why we're going back. We're using half the lane, which forces these guys to pass way over. As soon as he gets there, boom, I'm in the draft. He gets a little quiet, just like that. an opportunity to uh, go ahead and turn off you know, take a drink just turn off the power a bit even if it's just 30 seconds that does make a difference you could also do just a standard pace line and you guys rotate periodically but we chose to do this because it gets you into the wind more frequently and gets you out of the wind more often. So every time you come through, you're a little fresher. These are the kind of rides that really tune up your body, burn a lot of excess fat calories, build a lot of capillaries for increasing your metabolic function and your ability to process lactate. It's sweet, man. We'll probably have another five to eight kilometers, probably about five kilometers, three miles, I think. You hear the wind. Now the road's kicking up.
if we get one of our little bump, it levels off. Now look in the distance. It goes up and it kicks to the left. It's a beautiful road. It's still a lot quieter than most of the roads near where we live. Even with the increased traffic for Saturday morning, later in the morning. Keeping the effort steady, finding a rhythm. Paul comes to take the lead. It's going downhill, and so he's going to go through the gears. You got to keep shifting up. You want to feel the gears. You don't want to coast if you can avoid it. It's a lot of bumps right there where that bridge was. The bridge connected to. There's a car behind us, but he's waiting. There you go. So I'm rolling to the front. He's tapping his horn that he's coming around, but if you're in that other lane, that's not necessary. <laughs> if you're worried about us, give us plenty of room like he did. So I don't know the point of that. But anyway, it was a friendly horn. It was like I'm coming by, you know, that kind of stuff. He's letting us know you're coming by. That's okay. Yeah. The road kicks in here and says, yeah, 2%. We, I just felt it. These are the kind of rides that get you very, very well conditioned. It strengthens your muscles, your ligaments, and everything that you need when you really start hitting the higher zones. I think these kind of rides are more important than the, hard, the harder ones because even though you need to get the harder ones in when it's close to your events, but these are the things that give you a base that makes the higher zones worthwhile. Because if you have no base, your higher zones won't really mean matter that much. But by building a strong base, when you really go hard, it will be something special. So whenever possible, air on the side of an easy ride whenever you get an extra day don't feel like you gotta hammer yourself you're not gonna hammer yourself into shape ride yourself into shape because you'll just make yourself tired if you're hammering all the time you have to recover from those sessions so just like these require recovery as well but they don't require as much as when you push into the higher zones and until you recover from those very hard efforts you're not going to improve you can end up actually overtraining. 
So whenever you have extra time, extra hours, whatever, a little extra endurance will not hurt you. The road's going like up. That. Also, believe it or not, the climb. Yeah, I feel it. It's a slight grade. And then with this wind, it makes the same. Yeah, and I says 3%. It, it just, you go from minus one to three like that. And it just, it affects your rhythm. Come through to take the pole. We approach 1774, the train shows up. This train, there have been trains all day long. We had to wait for several. So, I don't know what you did on Saturday, but this is part of what we did on Saturday. Remember, get your K's in and keep the doctors 